everybody has a question of what, I mean, as I can them this way, what you saw was I got in here and I killed that leg and I'm crunching up here and I'm heavy on this guy. This elbow now becomes kind of a, a bumper here and I'm gonna deflect it a little bit and kind of keep it open as I, as I take my slide steps this way. Here, slide steps this way. Now my elbow hides so he can't bring the knee back in front. A lot of times you'll see him try to go knee shield right here, trying to bring it inside, he can't. I got my elbow to my knee, he's blocked. Sometimes they try to bring the foot back in front, all kinds of weirdness, and I'm going right here, okay? And I'm starting to drive my weight forward. This elbow is my deflector. I wanna punch that underhook. I'm gonna be constantly spamming that underhook under there, but he's keeping his elbow tight. He's very disciplined on bottom, he knows better. At this point, I'm going across the collar, okay? For a cross collar grip, and I'm just gonna lock myself to this sleeve right here, and this elbow is going to the mat above his head, boom. Now I'm cutting through, okay? Because now the elbow function is an underhook. So if he wants to hide that, especially in the gi, we're gonna go with cross collar knee cut, okay? Where I drive my elbow across, pinning his whole upper <laughs> body down. And the head can go down on top of that, okay? So hiding that elbow, yeah, it's a defense to it, but it's not the end all be all. We have options here. The whole goal is that we wanted to get to, car to half guard. So let's say we're in, in this position here, and I pop down here and I can't necessarily get, say I can't necessarily get to the <coughs> underhook. Did I just accomplish my objective? Absolutely, I'm flat, I'm low, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in half guard. I'm not high. Now I got some other options, right? I can start working long steps, okay? I mean, there's a bunch of things that I can do. I can lay down and start now, start trying to really punch this underhook. From a different state, from a different place, but I'm fighting from half guard, right? I'm not fighting out here at the end of his guard where he can do all this damage, where he can have all these sweeps and all this other stuff. I'm staying down low and I want to get chest to chest. Last part. Okay. Over under, right? Constantly looking for the underhook and the cross face. And we're always trying to get to where we're passing guard. Half. That's, that's what we're ultimately wanting. At any point that I can shoot into half, and that's an open half, closed half, it doesn't matter. Half guard is when I'm between his legs and I can drop myself down. The kill works beautiful for the over under. Okay? With all things being equal, Jiu Jitsu is very cyclical. Now we're starting to see a run back toward a lot of very traditional passes that are becoming really, really devastating and working very, very well. The over-under is no different, okay? It's a beautiful adaptation off of the kill, and it puts us in some really, really good positions. So we get to the kill position, and I close on him, and I'm locked up. Got him balled up, working the pressure pass. Okay, now from this position here, at the moment that this leg starts to float, or I want to punch my hand, I'm going to use my elbow. Punch the elbow, punch the elbow out. The leg gets some separation. This hand is going to come up underneath. Okay, now once I've caught this, I'm going to go down to the belt. So now I have a locked up hand. Okay, I have the collar. He can't run from me. All right, and I've got his leg locked. Now I'm going to drop to the knees and go to my over under. So it's going to slide back. I'm going to come down, and this hand is going to come up underneath. Whoops. You with me? This is the part we're going to work first. I'm not going to go any farther than this because this is. Some of this gets confusing for people. Now, if you have already got an aptitude for this and you want to try it, okay, head's going to go away from the other leg. Body weight's down, shoulders in the diaphragm, right here. And we're going to come back, okay? We're going to go to kill. When we get to kill, this is the system I want to try to use every time. Collar grips, lock them up, elbows come to the knees. Pulling his head up off of the mat. Okay. From this compressed position, it's really, really difficult for him to operate his guard. Really hard. Squatting, punch the elbow out, get some separation off of that leg. We're going to go up underneath we're going to catch the belt. Or if you can't catch the belt, just catch the lapel. It's fine right here. Don't make a bunch of efforts at it. Just grab something under there. Okay. Now from here, while I hold the collars, I'm going to bring my, my hand in front and I'm going to drop to my knees. This hand is going to shuck around the back side and I'm gonna grab it at his ankle, or I'm just gonna float my hand right now. 
absolutely imperative that you do not let this go like this with this hand back here. This is not good. Okay, we've got some option for it here in just a second. But we don't want to get there. So here to here, we keep everything trapped. All right? He cannot get separation as long as I have this high side locked. If I let this go, he can get the separation needed to start pulling that leg out. As long as I stay here, there is no separation that he's going to get for that. All the best he can do is start to try to hit the skate, push off the head, and I'm just going to stay right with it. Okay? Things need to slow down dramatically right here. So once I get to here, okay, hand is up and under. I'm going to offset my head to the opposite side. Shoulders coming down to the, to the uh, belly here, to the diaphragm. Now we can start to work to work on our pass. Just get to the position. Head down, butt up, stop. Here we go. One, two, two. Push, push, push. They have two responses. They're either going to bench press you or they're going to they're going to push off you and they're going to hip escape. And we really haven't <coughs> talked about the actual uh, pass sequence that I want you guys to use yet. So I just want you to see how dynamic it is. There's really only two responses they're going to have. They're either going to push off of you, they're going to bench press you. One of the two. The hip escape is pretty common. They're going to they're going to do this and post and post. They're trying to bring their knee in front. That's how important this side is. Okay, so from here, once I'm under here and I grab this, this pant leg, all right, I'm gonna, as I move to it, once my head goes down, I'm gonna move to this side, all right? Initially, I'm actually gonna go both, kind of both directions. So I'm here, come up. My shoulder is on the mat, is on him, head is on the mat. I walk a little bit this way, okay? Then I can come back and st back step and come off and go around. You're just wallowing the hell out of their chest, okay? Straightening the leg out is gonna make a big difference as well. So from here, when I'm underneath and I have the belt and I have the pant, pressure here, straightening the leg out if I can push down. And if I can't, as I walk to the side, straightening at the same time that I kick over allows me to pass. All that weight stays centered right there in the chest and you're just brutalizing. Okay. If they push away, how do we deal with it? You're generally going to get this right here. He's going to start pushing and hipping away. We're just going to run with him. Notice I'm staying on this bottom side knee because if I let go of it, he pulls it right back inside. Okay? Stay on that bottom side knee until I'm completely around and get my knee in front. Whoosh. Here we go. One, two, three. 